Welcome. I offer you a choice. A choice between two worlds. Take the blue pill and continue living in the world you know. A world of complacency and indifference. Or you can take the red pill and join us in creating a world where like-minded people come together to fight for freedom. What the elites don't want you to know is that there are 200,000 open committee man seats in the Republican Party. These party members are the ones who determine the future of the GOP. The precinct strategy will teach you what it takes to elect America first candidates who share your love of country and desire a better America. Will you take the blue pill and continue living in a world where a corrupt few control everything? Or will you take the red pill and join us? Let's take our country back, one precinct at a time. Choose wisely. Your future depends on it. Visit precinctstrategy.com now. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen to the 71st episode of Please Call Me Crazy. This is your guest host, Professor Penn. Honored to be with you. I'm very excited to be here, and I'm happy to see you all again. I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to say in the live chat. It's very, uh, it's very uplifting. There we have uh, Royce White, movie star. We're going to add that to his uh, long list of uh, accomplishments. Royce is uh, playing basketball this week, and I'm going to urge you all to watch him uh, this weekend. Big three, fantastic three-on-three basketball. I find it more entertaining than the other league, the other guys. Royce scored 20 last weekend. He was the star of the game and probably the most valuable player of the weekend. He was uh, dominant. His team was dominant. They actually crushed the team that beat them in the finals last year, which I thought was quite uplifting. Uh, I enjoy watching uh, the big three, um, not the least of which because I enjoy watching Royce. And I, he, you know, we're his, you know, we, we, we want to support him. So put some time into the big three. It's, it's, really worth, it's really worth your time, and it is entertainment. And we do enjoy some, you know, we do deserve some entertainment. Uh, but this is serious business. We, let, let's just delve into this uh, Opening piece, this precinct strategy piece, where Royce is playing the uh, uh, archetype of Morpheus, the archetypical Morpheus, and he's um, he's leading us. He's leading us to the precinctstrategy.com. That's precinctstrategy.com. That's where you go for a tutorial on everything you need to know to get into the game of politics. That's if you live in Florida, or you live in Oklahoma, or you live in Washington, or you live in Kansas. Wherever you live in this country, precinctstrategy.com is the place to go to get what you need to get off the bench and get in the game and take our country back one precinct at a time. I want to thank Free People Radio, where Royce and I work, bringing you truth. This is truth media, truth media. I'm not saying we know what the truth is. Let's not, any of those people that are watching out there that are looking to write it down, I'm not claiming we know the truth. We're striving to find the truth together as a community, which is a damn sight different than the traditional media, which gives us a narrative and tells tells us to believe it. You know, there's things that come from the mainstream media that are palatable, a little, Most of what we're getting is a curated story meant to imprison us in that matrix, that matrix. Now, in my my youth, that matrix movie, boy, was that a big deal. Well, I can't tell you what a big deal that was. When that came out, it was 1999. And at that time, I was hanging around with a bunch of people that did very dangerous things for a living. And when I say very dangerous, I mean, very dangerous. And everybody was pushing themselves as far as they could go. People were jumping over cars that were going 60 miles an hour. They were trying to shoot with their left hand as good as their right hand. I mean, these were, these were people that were devoted to the kind of things that the matrix really, you know, incorporated into its narrative. 
And uh, I knew right at that time when I saw that movie about the blue pill and the red pill, I knew that that was just the way it was. I knew it then, and I knew it because of the experiences that I had had leading up to that point in my life. And what really happened? That's 1999. So what really happened was the brainwashing, the application of the matrix across the whole uh, domain of American society intensified technology, which the movie was trying to presage, actually became reality and art predetermined the future. We know we knew what was going to happen. When we why we said, "Come on, this can't be." I bet you so. And let me just make a an admission. Sometimes when I look at how much the Matrix and some of the other movies uh, predicted the future, I have to wonder what's going on here. What's really going on? Am I living in some kind of simulation? Because I look around me and I see a lot of people taking these blue pills. I used to call them fragments, fragments, fragments of human beings. They're not really full human beings. They're partial. And, you know, this has been talked about for many, many years, hundreds of years. Half the story has never been told. A lot of people have got half the story or less than half the story. And then we have all these fragmentary humans doing horrifying things. They're like automatons. I mean, think about this. What kind of human being walks into a school and kills children? I mean, come on. That's a repository of some strange energy. And what's interesting is the same thing happens in China. They just had an event in China where a guy walked into an elementary school. This is within the last couple of weeks. And he stabbed six children to death in the school. You know, this, this, is, this is not the behavior of a fully developed human being. So we're living here, and I want to say hello to you, and I'm glad to be back with you, and I, I hope you're doing well. And we're, we're here together building this community, and we're doing it within the context that, you know, we're all waking up. But some of these fragments, some of these people are so undeveloped under-resourced, actually intentionally damaged, that they do things that just destroy our entire culture. And where does that come from? we got to take that red pill. I mean, when you take that red pill, if you go back to the Matrix, you know, that rabbit hole, it goes way down. I think they call it being black-pilled now, not red-pilled. I mean, you know, you can really go a long way with this. And let's just talk about, not just for a minute, not the problem, because we all, we're all here in this community because we know there's a problem. Or you wouldn't be watching Please Call Me Crazy. You couldn't take it because Royce is a, a constant commentator and an accurate commentator on the cultural malaise and the cultural evil that we're living through right now. So I know if you're watching me and you're a Please Call Me Crazy uh, audience member or community member, better said, you know things are, are bizarre. I mean, it's just bizarre. Well, let me tell you, it's been bizarre for a really long time, a really long time. And I'm going to say about a third of the people, about a third, are, are really woke up now to what's going on. And then there's probably another cohort that's in various stages of waking up. And then there's a cohort that are just completely brain dead or given over to evil, and they're not going to wake up. And that's the playing field that we're, we're working with. That's politics. I mean, really, at one level, it's politics. So that ad, which is going to be all over media, which Roy starred in, about the precinct strategy, let's just talk about that because it's my contention that truth media plus the patriot economy equals freedom. How is that operationalized? Truth media, the truth, seeking the truth, plus a patriot economy, like our sponsor, TireGet.com, 
14,000 different kinds of tires in stock for all your tire needs. Now, this is a big audience watching. You all buy tires, or most of you have to buy tires. And you've been buying tires someplace for a very long time. And I'm not here to knock that tire store. You might know the guy. Could be a cousin. I don't know. But when you go to TireGet.com and buy there, it's supporting this broadcast because that's an advertiser on this channel. And that's allowing this channel to continue to pursue truth media. So truth media plus the patriot economy equals freedom. And the precinct strategy is the political action plan where we're going to go out into our neighborhoods and spread truth media and the patriot economy. And how does this work? What, what is Roy saying here? Well, there's actually a person that started this whole thing. And you know what? When I say he started it, okay, we've talked about this, Charles Darwin, the origin of the species. You know, that whole thing was funded by the crown. It, you know, it's the competition of, 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 of um, individual participants or individual units of a species that the strong survive, you know, survival of the fittest. And then Spencer, his cousin, turned it into social Darwinism so that cultures were competing. And all that did was really justify the British business model of slavery, drugs, and piracy. That's what it was all about. That's what it was about. It was a political, operationalized plan to justify through the political process. Remember we talked about, you know, if you've never gone to the Professor Penn podcast, you can go back. We talked about this at great length. Sir Francis Galton, a Mason, who operationalized the concept of eugenics. That's what you get when, when people understand that there's an evolution of the species. Well, why not intervene into it? Why not make the species more healthy like breeding prize bulls or slaves? Why not breed selectively for the traits that we want to see expressed? In other words, take the process away from God's world and make it the province of man. And Galton operationalized that idea, the concept of eugenics, which is an outgrowth of origin of the species. He operationalized it into a political ideology, which is spread out all over the world. It's everywhere. It's the scientific method applied to evolving the human species. We call it transhumanism. That's what we're really fighting and facing. So when we ever get into these con you know, conflicts like the Ukraine issue, the pro-life, pro-abortion issue, these are all distractions. And I, they're such critical issues. How can we call those issues distractions? But underneath it, while we're arguing and fighting and struggling and practicing politics underneath it in our universities, they are consistently and regularly turning out more and more research that's aimed at the scientific evolution of the human species and the human genome. And we just recently had, I just want to say it parenthetically, there was, and I, you know, Professor Penn reads these bills. Someone's got to do it. I mean, I do it, and I urge you to do it. Why? Because we can't outsource our self-governance. That I'm going to come back to it. That's what the precinct strategy is about. It's about getting off the bench, getting in the game, and making your will felt in the political process. And I want to talk about that a little bit today. I know Royce has talked about it. I want to delve into it from my perspective as a political activist. But this, this, um, this research, it's funded. You know, our universities, the university system is a $1.1 trillion industry. I want you to think about what that means because our economy is $24 trillion, something like that a year. I mean, it's, it's a huge part of our national gross domestic, gross domestic product. Of that $1.1 trillion, $400 billion, about 40%, is direct research grants from the government or from foundations. And what is all this research aimed at? 
really? What do they really do? They're trying to figure out how to kill me. That's the main body of it. And included in that is this transhumanist research, which if you're a Star Wars fan, it's kind of like the clone army, which seemed fantastic and crazy when George Lucas wrote it and directed it and produced it as Star Wars. But that's exactly what they're doing. They're creating a clone army that they want to use to evolve the human species. And anytime you start talking about man evolving human species, which we call positive uh, eugenics, positive eugenics, its little bastard cousin is close at hand, and that's called genocide. We saw that recently in World War II. But there's genocides all throughout history. Ethnic cleansing is negative eugenics. In other words, destroying or eliminating a genetic strain or a kind of a people. I mean, this is humans have been doing this. I mean, it's, it's a horrifying element of human history. And it's something that is part of the business model that pervades and dominates our country, the slavery, drugs, and piracy business model. And boy, I'll tell you, that's what this freedom movement that you and I are participating in, this political movement, this 200,000 empty chairs in the Republican Party, what this represents is an opportunity for, for me, and I've done this. So let me just give you the I statement. I'm not asking you to do something I haven't done myself. I I woke up, this is a great story, anecdote. I woke up uh, one morning right after the 2020 election. It was like any other day. You know, I'd sat there with my slide rule. I mean, that's a joke, right? But I was looking at all the counties in Georgia and how the election results were coming in. And I was, you know, focused on the political. And I looked at it, I said, there is no way Biden's going to win Georgia. The numbers just aren't there. The math shows me that President Trump has to win this state. And, of course, he didn't. And later that night, or maybe a couple of days later, President Trump was deplatformed off of Twitter. And I freaked out. And I'm not trying to say yes or no about Trump. I'm not here to get into the Trump argument and the, or the Trump positive. I just knew that if a tech company could silence the voice of an American president sitting in the White House, he was still the president. You know, I get choked up. I mean, it makes me so mad. You have to excuse me, I'm a human being, and some of these things just choke me up. He was still president of the United States. He was a lame duck president. But he was still the president, and they took him off of Twitter. And I flipped out. I mean, I like I was just out of my mind because for those of you that follow me, you know, I have some understanding of tyranny. And I know what happens when tyranny takes over. The first thing it does is it rounds up all the dissidents and kills them. So since I'm somewhat uh, dissident and uh, against the business model of slavery, drugs, and piracy, on record every day for years, I freaked out. I was probably scared. I mean, actually, I was scared. It, it, it expressed his anger. And I called a very good friend of mine, very good friend, someone I trust, someone who's ethical, moral, good. And, you know, he talked me off. You know, I was, I was on a ledge, right? Talked me off the ledge, calmed me down. And in my moment of clarity, I said, I must get involved in local politics. Now, I want to say that I had been involved in international affairs and national politics for quite some time. And uh, I'd always kind of looked down my, you know, I'm different now. So, you, you know, I forgive myself. Please forgive me. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forgive you because I wish to be forgiven. I repented. I had always believed that Minnesota politics was, you know, kind of beneath my station. I don't want to get involved with it. I didn't read the local newspaper. 
I was reading the international newspapers. I was reading nine, nine newspapers a day and the federalregister.gov, which I'm going to tell you, if you want to know what your government's up to, they write everything down. That's what's beautiful about people that graduated from universities. They can't help themselves. They have to write everything down. So if you want to know what your government's doing, you can go to the Senate. They have a portal. You can read all the bills. I'm going to get back to that bill. I didn't forget it. You can go to the House, read all the bills there. You can go to the federalregister.gov and see everything the executive branch does every day. I get up every morning and read it. It's the news that matters. And uh, I'd always kind of look down on the local because I was internationally involved and nationally involved, and I had this moment of clarity, like an alcoholic, like a drug addict. I had a moment of clarity. I'm going to die unless I change. And I repented, and I committed to myself that I was going to get involved in my local precinct, in my local political party. I resolved it, that I was going to do that. And what I did was, I went to precinctstrategy.com. I went to precinctstrategy.com. And I read it, and I looked at it. And I had the audacity to pick up the phone and call Dan Schultz. Dan Schultz. This is a man that is not seeking any kind of notoriety. He's a patriot, and he's doing what he's doing because he believes in the United States of America and our founding documents. And Dan had set this thing up years ago to give American citizens some insight into how to get into the game of politics because the way it's set up, and I can only speak about Minnesota because I don't know how it works every place else. I didn't try to get into the Texas GOP or the Oklahoma GOP, but I'm going to assume it's similar everywhere. Similar, the same but a little different everywhere. I tried to get into the Minnesota GOP. They didn't even call me back. I was like, what? I'm leaving voicemail after voicemail. State party, local offices. You know, my name is David Penn, and I want to get involved. Please call me. I mean, they didn't call me. I mean, I was stunned. I got so mad, I called an attorney. I said, these sons of blanks. That's another thing. I know Royce likes to swear, so do I. But you know what? We're, we're taking this movement downtown now. This is going to spread out to lots of people that don't know us. We want to bring them into the community. Now, I don't think swearing, and for those of you that don't like my stream of consciousness, I'm sorry, it's just who I am. Laugh at me. For those of the people in the audience that don't like swearing, I don't want to offend you. Now, I don't personally think swearing is a bad thing. It's not as, you know, I know there's some New Testament language about it, but the real sin is using God's name in vain, and that I do not do. But because we're taking this movement out broadly now, broadly to millions of people, as you can see from that advertisement, we're making a move. We're making the move. It's getting close to the next election. I'm not going to do anything that unnecessarily alienates anyone. That's me. If Royce wants to continue to swear, I love it, you know, but maybe one day he's going to be a senator. You'd be the first professional basketball player, professional movie producer, cussing senator in a long time. I mean, in public. They all caught, let me tell you, these people, they all cuss in private. The difference between Royce and our elected representatives is when you watch Royce or you watch me, this is who I really am. I know Royce. This is how Royce really is. We're not fronting. There isn't a backside here where we're somebody else. We are who we are. You're getting to meet us just the, you know, it's very expensive to keep lies. You got to remember them. When you tell the truth, hey, it's the truth. It's very simple. That's why we're truth media. But I'm going to go back here now and track back and say, I was calling my local party and they ignored me. I mean, they just didn't call me back. Now, you can call it incompetence. Now, I subsequently met the person in charge of my local area, and we became very good friends. And I said to him, you know, I was going to sue you. You didn't call me back for months. 
And uh, we got through that. I mean, really, we're really close friends. He's a very good man. I, I mean, I really care about this person. But he had two sides to that story. Side one was he's busy and he didn't get to me. Side two was, you know, there's a lot of people that make a phone call and they're not really committed to do the work. So if you're sitting in the party and you're getting phone calls from people, it's you're either too busy to call them or maybe you're saying to yourself, I want to vet these people out and make sure they're serious. But at this point, I want to tell you, there's 200,000 vacant seats in the party. That's half strength. The Republican Party's at half strength. And let me tell you who's running the Republican Party. I'm not going to forget about this bill. Don't let me forget about the bill. Because I want to get back to the university system and what an evil these people are. But there's 200,000 seats vacant. And that's not an accident. In fact, when I finally got in the party and started to give these people everything that I had, because I love my country, and more importantly, I'm a servant of my God. I mean, that's what's beautiful about America, right? Our rights are granted to us. Oh, let me just read this, just for fun. This is why I'm doing it. I hope this is why you're doing it too. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's why I'm doing it. That's why I'm doing it. I'm not going to live in a country where my rights are granted to me by some guy just like me. You know, I've worked my whole life to put my underwear and my pants on with some style. I don't stumble around when I do it because I made a career out of doing it with some style. These people that are ruling me right now, I bet they stumble around like oafs when they put their underwear on. You know, these people do not get to rule over me. I can elect them as my representative, but they're not my rulers. And that's why I love the United States of America, because this country is based on unalienable rights that are granted to me that I'm endowed with these rights by a creator. That's fantastic. So these people that are running the Republican Party, I'm not talking about all of us that are voting Republican who are supporting the America First movement that love this country and want to protect our republic and our freedom and our children. I'm not talking about those people. We are the populist movement. We are the people's movement. And what are we dealing with? We're fighting a Democrat party, which is completely globalist, eugenicist, anti-American, anti-American citizenship. That's my opinion. Maybe you agree with me. Do you agree with me? Can I get an amen in the chat that these people really hate American citizens? Seems to me they do. But what was really interesting, and we got to clarify this, the leadership of the Republican Party thinks the same way, exactly the same way as the Democrat Party. They're materialists. They want the Republican Party to be about low taxes and low regulation so they can pile up cash in their bank accounts at the expense of the American people. What we're here for is to enhance and to grow and to promote the well-being of the American citizen not to be vampires. We're not vampires. We're not communists either. We are here to create a country that is about human well-being. But these people that are running the party, eh, they're just as much into the business model of slavery, drugs, and piracy as the Democrat is. I can't tell the difference. Therefore, I say unto you, since I know you're watching me, I call these people, because, you know, I'm very involved in Minnesota, I got three people watching me. I call them the Three Stooges. You'll like this. I think it's funny. No, it's not personal. They just are stooge-like in how they think. Mr. We don't do that here. That would be called politics. Mr. History doesn't matter. In other words, brainwasher. And Mr. We don't need any more Republicans. And that's the guy I want to talk about. Because when he told me that the first time, I thought to myself, 
What kind of scam is this? We don't need more Republicans. Don't we need more Republicans? And then I figured it out with the help of my friend Dan Schultz. They don't want any more Republicans. Because if you come into this party, wherever you live, if you go to precinctstrategy.com and you make an inquiry there, you are going to be put into contact wherever you live. If you live in Alaska, Dan's got a contact up there. If you're in Minnesota and you go to precinctstrategy.com, Dan's going to send me an email and I'm personally going to call you. Now, if 400 people do it today, which would be a great blessing, it's going to take me a while to get back to you. And I hope 400 people in the audience do go from Minnesota to precinctstrategy.com, and we will get in touch with you. And this movement is spreading out all through the country because we, the people, have abdicated our power, we've outsourced our governance to evil men and women. Evil. They're evil. I mean, I just have to call it like I see it. Please forgive me if that's too strong for you, but for all the rest of you that it's not too strong, these people are evil. They are given over to a business model that parasitizes the American citizens. And this has to change. And the first step in changing it, the fundamental building, if we want permanent change, not an electoral victory that's reversed, Two years later, I'm talking about the kind of electoral change that lasts for decades. We got to get into the Republican Party. This party, the Republican Party, you know, I'm, I'm an officer of the Republican Party. These people hate me here in Minnesota. When I say hate, I mean, I'm not making it up. I had a woman walk up to me. She goes, I hate you. I said, you hate me. I don't even know who you are. That's how crazy it is. And why do they hate me? I'm telling the truth. They just hate me because I'm telling the truth. They hate Royce because they're telling the truth. Let me tell you a story about Royce. I'm getting back to that bill. Not going to forget it. We go back to the universities. We're taking a long trip. That's why I like Please Call Me Crazy. If you go to the Professor Penn podcast, I'm very scripted. When I come on Please Call Me Crazy, I get to be, hey, please call me crazy. I fit right in. I fit right in with you. You know, Royce has tried to get involved in the Republican Party of Minnesota, and I have personal knowledge that his inquiries were intentionally rebuffed because he's viewed by the leadership as a danger, a physical danger. You know, you can't get much more racist than that. So I'm going to tell you, I got these three stooges. Hey, guys, the American Nazi Party is right down the block. Go join it. Because we are a people's movement of people that love and care one for another. We are dedicated to our God, our country, and our families. And there's no place in this movement for racism, anti-Semitism, xenophobia, homophobia. We are all American citizens. And that citizenship... Our Constitution is set up that the most important element of this country is your citizenship. You are the governor of this country because you're the governor of yourself. This is about self-governance, self-governance. And how do we do it? There's 200,000 empty seats in this party. Please go to Precinct Strategy. Dot com. Send an inquiry. Let the people in your local area meet you. Make a relationship with them. Learn how to get involved in the game of politics. And I'm going to tell you, because I've been doing this for several years now, and I have some thoughts about it. The reason I didn't want to get involved in politics is because I intuitively know that the people that are doing it are assholes. They just are. I mean, they're just assholes. They are. They are. The same guy that talked me off the ledge, he told me many years ago, governance is prosecuted by the people that show up. So while I was spending my time with my kids, going to see a ball game, coaching soccer, teaching my daughter how to play piano, all the things that I like to do, not showing up at the school board, not showing up at the city council, 
not showing up at my local party because I trusted. Oh, I was very trusting. Stupid. I trusted people that are evil, and what they've done is, is to the very local neighborhood that I live in, they've infected the people with lies, lies of the highest order, brainwashing, misinformation, disinformation, lies that are intended to do one thing, give them the blue pill and control them. And people take that blue pill wholesale. Because that blue, hey, in your state, let me ask you a question. In your state, I'm just curious, in your state, is marijuana legal? I mean, does that seem a little strange? And I'm not getting down on anybody that smokes dope. That's not my line of country. I'm not judging. But the state distributing drugs for profit or the state setting up gambling for profit. Hey, I'd rather have the mafia do it. At least there's a little bit of, hey, don't do that. But when the state makes uh, an appeal to our appetites legal and then exploits us with our appetites, like sugar. There's one. Hey, sugar. I know I'm going all over the boards, but I'm just full of it today because guess what? If we don't get control of this party, if we don't get into the party and make it about America, because it's a globalist party now, and how do you know that? Because we're living in an empire. So if we don't go in there and make this party about us, the American citizens, they're just going to kill all of us. That's their plan. You know what, Tanner? Can you play this piece from Senator Lindsey Graham just to underscore where I'm at before we get back to the bill? Senator Graham, after that very uh, newsworthy press conference yeah. yesterday, the Russian ambassador came out and accused you and Blumenthal of essentially inciting nuclear war. How do you respond to him? Well, uh, Dick and I didn't move any tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus. <laughs> <laughs> so the bottom line is Can you stop Putin that, please? is playing a game. Okay, this is Senator Lindsey Graham, a Republican from the great state of South Carolina. Uh, we're going to come right back to this. So this guy is talking about being in league with a Democrat, Senator Blumenthal from Connecticut, a more skullduggerous human being. I wish I could talk about it. I've had personal interactions with this guy. He's awful. But these two are together. Why? Because they're in on it together. It's the uni party. And, it, you know, Senator Graham laughingly says, well, I didn't move any tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus. You know, you can go to the uh, Internet and take a look at all the nuclear weapons that are in Europe and in the southern area in Turkey that are pointed right at the Russians, like press play and Russia's blown to smithereens three minutes later. Go take a look at it. So he's laughing like, oh, hey, our hands are clean. No, 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 no. We have the Russian Federation encircled with conventional military, with bioweapons, and with nuclear weapons. So let's not lie about it, okay? Let's continue with Senator Graham. Every time we want to send any weapon, that's going to be World War III. You know, if you send in tanks, that's a new game. If you do the HIMARS, every time we try to help Ukraine evict the Russians, they threaten the West. Here's what I think is real. According to President Biden, the use of a tackler nuclear weapon by Russia is becoming a more real scenario as Ukraine gains momentum on the battlefield. Can you stop it, please? So what I'm saying to you is these people will kill us. What this is called is very high-level brainwashing. What Senator Graham is doing, in association with all the rest of his cohort, is he's telling us to prepare for a possible nuclear confrontation with the Russians. And let me say to you, what? Why is this even possible? What kind of assholes are running our machine such that we're on the verge of nuclear war in 2023? This completely reveals why I'm asking every one of you to go to precinctstrategy.com and investigate how to get into the game of politics. Because if the American citizens, is any of you out there, I'm asking you this question, does a nuclear war benefit any of you? 
I'm not saying anything because I'm asking people to think. Will a nuclear war bring you and your children and your grandchildren or for your future life if you're 20 years old? Is there any benefit that you can see in a nuclear war? Okay, here's your government. If you're in South Carolina, you elected this guy. He's your senator. He is prepping us for a nuclear exchange. Please continue. The Russian generals know. If you follow the order of, Plu of Putin to blow up the nuclear facility, the plant, to radiate Europe, or you drop a tactical nuclear weapon to turn around the war you're losing, I consider that an attack on NATO, and Senator Blumenthal, a Democrat, agrees. You cannot irradiate half of Europe and expect NATO to sit on the Stop sidelines. Stop it, please. Did you hear his comment? Senator Blumenthal, a Democrat, agrees. In other words, if you're a Democrat or a Republican, scam, a scam, because the parties are run by the very same people. These are the people that come out of our universities, which I'm going to get back to. So what he's saying is there's broad bipartisan agreement in what our government, which is we the people, we're supporting this. We're supporting the potential destruction of our own families. Please continue. So it's a warning to the generals that if you follow this order, then all hell is going to fall on Russian soldiers inside of Ukraine. What should the red line be for President Biden for America? You know, there are some reports that chemical weapons may have already been used, will be used. Where, where's the red line? When should America respond? Well, I think if you do anything to attack neighboring countries, an attack on NATO would be what? having a radioactive cloud fly over the country. Stop, please. Stop, please. So here's what he has to say. An attack by Russia at any of the neighboring countries, because all the neighboring countries are in NATO, and there's a mutual defense pact. That's what NATO is. But isn't it interesting that that's not happening? And I'm not here to be pro-Putin. He's not taking the bait, President Putin. He's not attacking any other countries. So now they're talking about a nuclear power plant that Graham is implying the Russians are going to blow up. Take a look at how the wind blows. It does not blow east to west, okay? If they blow that plant up, the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to irradiate their own country, the Russian country. Number two, they have no interest in doing that, and I'm not going to go into it with video evidence, but the Russian government is on record, and so is the in, in the International Atomic Energy Commission. They have inspectors at that plant sending reports back every day. That plant is monitored. The agency or the government that is creating problems in that area is the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians are shelling the plant, not the Russians. At least that's my reading of what I see in the news and how I interpret what is, you know, actually being released. Now, I have to say, who knows? I'm not there. But it appears from the evidence that's available to the public that the shelling is being pursued by the Ukrainians, that the Russians have no interest in blowing that plant up. But here's Graham talking about that plant blowing up. What kind of scam's going on here? Please continue. And, you know, destroy the quality of life. This idea of using a nuclear weapon to turn around a conventional loss on the battlefield is getting real. Moving the weapons into Belarus, he's testing us at every turn. So Dick and I, Blumenthal, are trying to say checkmate to the Russian generals. Go down this road at your own peril. They're losing on the battlefield. Their ability to decapitate the Kyiv uh, government fails spectacularly. Now they're losing ground every day. Over time, I think the Ukrainians are going to break through uh, to Mariupol. Stop, please. And so what Graham is saying here is, now here's what Putin is doing. Putin has frozen this conflict on what's called the LOC, the line of conflict. He's talking, you know, Graham's talking about there's these huge territory changes. No, there's not. This thing has been in a trench warfare for months because Putin knows that if he breaks through and heads for the Polish border, for example, it's going to trigger a NATO response. He's not doing it. 
He just wants to be satisfied with the gains he's made in the eastern Ukraine. It's called the Donbass region. It's predominantly a Russian-speaking area with ethnic Russians who, interestingly, were under ethnic cleansing, genocide by the Ukrainians right up and until the invasion by the Russian army. And now he's talking about Graham, about the Ukrainians breaking through, which means, you know, the mercenary army that's really doing the fighting, because they're not all Ukrainians. Who knows how many thousands of Americans off the book mercenaries are in there fighting for four or five hundred thousand bucks a year. You know, some people, their greatest skill is killing their artists. Hey, for five hundred thousand dollars a year, you can go practice your artistry. That's what's going on. And maybe they'll break through. And if the mercenary and Ukrainian army reaches the Russian border and threatens Russia, you can be sure the Russians are going to use nuclear tactical nukes because it's a matter of survival for them. Our government is on record working towards the the end of the Putin regime. I mean, they just want to get rid of them. They're very upfront about it. So, you know, for the Russians, this is an existential battle. It's on their border. This isn't happening in South Carolina. They're, this is not happening in Florida. This is happening on the Russian border. And I've, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. First time there was, this is recent history. 1807, the British attacked Russia inside of Russia. 1853, the British attacked Russia inside of Russia. It was called the Crimean War, and 500,000 Russians died. It was not a small war. At the end of World War I, at the time of the Bolshevik Revolution, 700,000 foreign troops occupied large swaths of Russian territory, including 13,000 American troops that were garrisoned in Vladivostok, Russia. 1942, the German army invaded Russia. There was 20 million, 25 million Russians that died in that conflict. Not a kidding around deal. We had the Cold War, and now we've got this war. All these wars happened inside of Russia. Let's leave the Cold War out of it. Every one of these wars happened in the Russian region. But we're supposed to think, you know, Putin's going to take over South Carolina. Hey, you know what? We just need to ask the question. I can't get into Putin's head. Maybe he wants to take over South Carolina. But the way this is going, the way this is going, hey, we're never going to find out because we're going to have a nuclear war. Please continue. The Russians are going to be cut off from their supply routes inside of Ukraine, uh, inside of Crimea, and we live in a dangerous world, but I just want the Russians to know that if you explode a nuclear weapon in Ukraine, the effects will be all over Europe, NATO nations, and you will be at war with NATO. You know, as far as the Republican Party goes, you have been very outspoken on the need to uh, fund Ukraine militarily yeah. and economically uh, in post-reconstruction. Um, how do you think Trump and the rest of the House GOP, how are they going to square, how do you square your position with some people that are very loud advocates for not continuing that support? Well, I'm right and they're wrong. That's how you square <laughs> Stop, please. How do you square that argument in the Republican Party between those people like Professor Penn that think this is crazy and the other half of the party that's globalist and eugenicist and they think this is just great? And what does Graham say? Hey, I'm right and you're wrong. I guess that's kind of the end of the conversation, isn't it? I'm wrong. Thank you, Senator Graham. Hey, up yours. Please continue. So, now, President Trump provided lethal weapons to the Ukrainians on his watch. If it were not That's for another the, lie. Uh, Stop here. Weapon. Yeah, Trump gave him a little bit of rope, a tiny little bit, maybe. Mostly what happened under President... Did you notice under President Trump, there was no war? Hey, nothing happened. It was a time of peace and prosperity. Let us go back in our minds to 2017 to 2021. Our economy was booming up until COVID, another conversation. And I mean booming. People were making money. People were getting optimistic. We were not engaged in any wars. President Trump quickly defeated ISIS. He was interested in withdrawing out of all these different forever wars. He was working on it. He met tremendous resistance because, you know, the government, it's globalist. 
the most important globalist organization on planet Earth is the U.S. military and the security state that really is the, the center of it, the heart, the eye of the dragon is the security state. It doesn't get any more globalist than that. President Trump didn't fight a war with the Russians. He said he got along with Vladimir Putin. In fact, they used that warmth that he had with Putin to say that he was a Russian agent all the way through his presidency. And that turned out to be a scam. I mean, come on, these people are full of it. Please continue, we're almost done with Senator Graham. Um, what do you call that, the javelin? Yeah. A lot of kids named Javelin in Ukraine right now, by the way. That's like the most popular new name. The Javelin anti-tank weapons that Trump provided slowed the assault on Kyiv. Now, President Biden has been providing weapons late. We should have had the F-16s uh, a year ago, ready to go. Air cover is missing here. Okay, to stop. My Republican stop. Two comments. Number one, uh, you know, I'm thinking of myself, I have five kids. They have beautiful names, my kids, and I named them all myself. And they have many criticisms of me as a father, which I know. And if they hear me today, I love you. But I really put time into their names. Their names are all beautiful. I wouldn't name my kid Javelin. What kind of a screwed up country do you have to live in when you're naming your kids after weapons? Like, hey, what's your name? Hey, my name is Sword Pen. My name is 38 Special Pen. My name is Magnum Pen. Hey, you know what? That's not something to brag about, Senator Graham. Senator Graham, if we're living in a world where our children are being named after weapons, something is very wrong. Please continue. And colleagues, the best way to expand a war is to allow a bad guy to get away with taking territory by force. I'm going to write a book, World War II for Dummies. If you think... <laughs> Putin is going to stop in Ukraine, you're not listening to what he said. But if Ukrainians can stop him, China is less likely to go into Taiwan. To all the China stop, folks please. out there. This is the oldest trick in the book, and this is what we have to guard against in our movement. What Graham is saying, World War II for dummies, is that Putin and Hitler is the same guy. Really? I don't think so, okay? I'm just going to go on record and say, maybe, but I don't think so. And when he says Biden is late with the weapons... We know of about $250 billion that the United States has put into this drama. There are 32 countries putting arms and money into the Ukraine. Who knows, it's, you know, who knows how many trillions have gone in here? And we don't know what's gone in here off the books because there's a big slush fund in the U.S. government that nobody knows anything about. So let's say it's $250 billion. $250 billion? Do you know what $250 billion could do for the American people? I mean, if we're just going to print money and create it out of thin air and give it to the people that make weapons, think of the scam involved in this. $250 billion for weapons. Hmm. The margin's got to be at least 30% on the low side. So that means somebody, somebody that owns a company as a stockholder, their company's got $75 billion of profit. Really? Really? For what? For what are we doing here? That's the question I'd like you to think about. Maybe we all agree in this audience. But to say that Biden's been slow on the uptake with the weapons, what does this guy want? What he wants is an all-out war in Europe, and he's pushing us there. Why? We don't have time to do that today. Come to the Professor Penn podcast. That's all we talk about. Please continue. How do you square having a budget that reduces the U.S. Navy from 298 ships to 291? How do you square the idea you want to stand up to China if you're willing to give Putin Ukraine? It makes no sense. I think the American people understand no Americans are dying. All they want is our technology and our weapons. They're doing the fighting and the dying. And Stop, and then we're done with this guy. What makes no sense to me my opinion, is to live in a country that there's $1.5 trillion spent every year on the military-industrial complex. I'm going to say if a third of it, a third of it is profit, it's $500 billion a year going to a handful of companies. 
and we have a medical industrial complex. Hey, we don't have to talk. We don't have the time to talk about what a bunch of you know buttes these people are. That's also one point five trillion. So domestic discretionary spending, three trillion dollars, has completely uh, dominated our political parties. It has broad bipartisan support. It's three trillion. The margin's got to be at least thirty percent. That's a trillion dollars going to a handful of people. And that's why I say our business model is slavery, drugs, and piracy. Because you and I are paying for this. We're paying for this. That's all we're pay- And we're not getting the gains. It's not like I'm getting a piece of the action. I'm just getting taxed. And the money's going uphill to the top. And guess what's coming downhill? A BS story is coming downhill. So, you know, the... The, the audacity of this man to go up and shill to get more budget and more war and more death is why I'm asking you to go to precinctstrategy.com. If you believe in America and you believe in God and you care about your children, get involved. Just go and get involved. And I want to finish with my story. I got involved. I spent two years trying to understand the Minnesota Republican Party. And I loyally served it. And I continue to loyally serve it. I think that the people that hate me here, that are in the party, they have every right to pursue what they believe. This is America. They have every right to hate me. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me is, and this is why we need you, because we're at half strength. Politics is a numbers game. Because they dominate the skill positions, let us say, or to use an even better metaphor, they're the king of the hill. They're at the top of the heap. They have controlled the mechanisms of the party, the constitutions, the rules. They have their cohort of people that have been hanging around for decades. These people are old. They're crypt keepers. They got to go, but to get rid of them, to get this party really focused on the well-being of the American people, half the party is empty because they want it empty. They don't want those seats filled because they know if you come into the party, if you join the party, you're not going to vote for slavery, drugs, and piracy. And this is the key thing. You won't be sitting on the couch like I was sitting on the couch complaining I don't complain anymore. Hey, baby, I'm in the ring. I'm in the ring, strapped up, fighting with these people 24 hours, seven days a week, and working with my community to build a political constituency to create a movement to get into the party and to get into the game so we can save our country. That's what we're really doing here. We're saving our country to protect our children, and we're doing it because we believe in God. That's what we're doing. That's why I'm asking you to get involved. And if I get 400 emails, I'll get back to every one of you. And that's what we're going to set up here in Minnesota. We're going to set up a political process by which thousands of Minnesotans are going to come into the political process. And I know the three stooges are listening to me, and what they're thinking is he's never going to get it done. People have bragged about this before, but they've made a mistake. I can feel it. I know you can feel it. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the change that's sweeping over the American people? The desire to get out of this spot that we're in and not get killed? You know, there's something interesting about the human being. We have what's called a survival impulse. We have a survival mechanism. We have a will to survive. What they want to do, these people that run the parties, They want to disconnect our survival impulse. They want to disconnect it. How do they do it? The blue pill. Smoke your dope. Eat your sugar. Get heavy. Do not be physically capable. Do not be physically well. Join the medical system. Hey, we're going to... Birth and death. A series of diagnostic codes and revenue streams that go for the drugs that treat those diagnostic codes. And if you notice, nobody ever gets better. Once they start down that road, 
You know, I have people in my own family, my grandmother. She's been dead many years, 10 years at least. Had her for a long time. She lived into her 90s, which, you know, hey, the human will. Even you take 50 pills a week or a day. She was to take 30, 40 pills a day. I used, Grams, what are you doing? She believed in science. And she still lived because she had a very strong constitution. She grew up in the old days with chickens in the backyard. It was hard to kill her. But I got an uncle. He didn't make it that long. He, well, he died 30 years earlier. Unfortunately, God rest his soul. Because when you come off the farm and you start living in the city and you start drinking Coca-Cola when you're 12 years old or 6 years old, you start undermining your health and undermining your health, hey, it doesn't work out that good for us. And we need to change that. We can change it. Our cultural expectations can change. And that's why we get involved in the party. And it doesn't have to just be the party. I mean, there's so many ways to be involved. You know, a precinct, that's your neighborhood. Do you talk to your neighbors? Do you know your neighbors? That's an interesting one, isn't it? Everybody used to know their neighbors. I bet a lot of people in this audience, when I say, do you know your neighbors, you're going to say to yourself, mm, no, not really. I'm not talking to my neighbors. Well, isn't that the way they want it? With us atomized and alone and disconnected from all the people around us? Instead of making an entree into the real web of human relationships, which, you know, they have the World Wide Web, WWW, that is a thin copy of the real relationship that we form one amongst the other. So if you don't know your neighbors, it's not an accident. It's just not an accident. That is what we've been given culturally to control us. You know, I go back a, a, you know, a step further. Let's think about our families. You know, in China, in China, right now, today, today, there's no Social Security to speak of. They give people, you know, 50 bucks. You can't live on it. People bring their parents into their household when they become adults. The grandmother and grandfather live with their children and live with the grandchildren. They die at home. The Chinese people are still living the natural life cycle. They're stronger in that way than we are. What do we do? We have Social Security. Our parents don't depend on us. Hey, you know what? They can tell us, hey, up yours. We don't need you. So we don't even know our parents, many of us. And our parents don't know our children. We're all spread out and animized. We're all alone. And what are we doing? We're living in a digital media called a smartphone that triggers our brain, gets us going on dopamine, and addicts us to an artificial world. And where did that technology come from? It came from our universities. And if you go back and do the research, and if you look at it for yourself, don't take my word for it. They were thinking this stuff up in the 1880s. Yes, that's how creative these evil people are. This stuff didn't develop by accident. What we're told and what we believe is, I'm going to swear one time, shit happens. It just happens organically. And that is not true. Our academic community has been working on these ideas for decades. Decades and decades and decades. Because we pour $400 billion a year into our university system. And what they research, hey, he who, hath, ha, he who has the gold makes the rules. So what do you think they're researching? what the government tells them to research, because they get a government grant. Just like the Crown told Galton and Spencer and Darwin what to research. They were on the payroll. It wasn't really free academic inquiry. It was paid academic inquiry. Oh, the, the academics don't like it when you talk like this. But I grew up in an academic world, so I know what goes on there. You're on the payroll. I, ha I have to say it again. 
in the live chat of please call me crazy. Somebody, yeah, they didn't really excoriate me, but they were kind of getting down on me. Hey, you're not really a professor. What kind of professor are you? Hey, I'm the kind of professor that's not on the payroll. That's the most dangerous kind. They don't tell me what to think. They don't tell me what to say. If I was actually on a payroll of a university and I was talking to you like this, when I went over to the uh, lounge where the professors hang out, nobody would talk to me. They'd be plotting behind my back how to get rid of me, just like the Three Stooges are doing in the Republican Party. I'm a committed Republican trying to make my state better, my precinct better, my neighborhood better. I'm totally committed to the well-being of the American people. And you know it because you're listening to me. You know where I'm coming from. You know what they think? Oh, this guy's going to gum up the slavery, drugs, and piracy model. We better get rid of him. But see, I'm not on their payroll either. So up yours. We're not going to play their game. When you go to precinctstrategy.com, your will, your will is in this battle. Think about it. Now, going back to these universities and the research that goes on there, which has been going on for decades, heading to exactly the technology we have today. And what's that technology? How to transform the human genome. How to evolve our species, the species that God created. You know, that's what it's really about. We're just a pass-through. This is a battle between a group of people that have a different vision for us than God did. I don't have to get into it any more than that. Those of you who have ears to hear can hear me. Those of you who don't, hey, we'll keep working on it. You're here. That's the first step. $400 billion a year, it's not enough. The CHIPS bill, the CHIPS bill, let's go back and think about the CHIPS bill. Now I'm going to ask a question. Who remembers the CHIPS bill? Let me tell you, it's not that old. It's within the last year. Our government, that would be we the people, that would be you and me, our elected representatives, who we let run roughshod over us, that's why they call us the grass roots, because they walk on us. Do you walk on your lawn? That's who they think. Oh, the grass roots. You hear all this thing from the prior, oh, the grass roots. If, you know what? I'm not a grass root. I'm an American citizen, okay? I'm a self-governing American citizen. Please don't call me a grass root. If you want to be walked on, be a grass root. If you want to stand up and have your will in the game, be an American citizen. That's your right. You are endowed with that right by a creator to pursue life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. These people, we're dependent on them to set up the rules so we can do that? Oh, no, they're not doing that. That's why Senator Graham is telling us there could be a nuclear war. Does that sound fun? Now, I know there's some people in the audience that are saying, hey, sounds like a good time. And you know what? If it comes to it, we're all going to have to find our joy in it. You know what? Come on. It's really not good for the children, is it? Nuclear war? And what is the CHIPS Act? The CHIPS Act is we got three theaters of conflict and a nuclear war could break out in any of them. Ukraine is just one of them. There's the Middle East, the Israel issue, which nobody talks about it, and that's the linchpin. And then we got the South China Sea with the Chinese over Taiwan and the really premium high end chip business is in Taiwan. So we passed a bill, that'd be you and me, because it's our government, we're responsible for it. It's called the CHIPS Act. $52 billion to build advanced chip manufacturing in Arizona. Oh, sounds great. We're ending our dependency on Taiwan and on that whole region, which will allow us to extricate ourselves from that drama, I thought that was cool, but that's not really what the bill was. That was the cover story. That's why you got to read these bills. In the fine print, there was $252 billion for scientific research. And what was it into? Transhumanism, advanced robotics, human robotic interfaces, artificial intelligence all the things that are intended to make me, a human being, irrelevant. And what do they plan to do with me when I become irrelevant? Well, go look it up. 
They plan to addict me to my phone, addict me to drugs, and kill me as quickly as they can. Soft kill. And if that doesn't work, it'll be hard kill. So does that sound a little bit intense? You know, I'm going to say again, trust but verify. You must, I'm asking you, you must do your own research. You must do your own research. And when you see what these people are up to, 200,000 empty seats await your appearance in the political stage. You can get involved in this. You can protect me. You can protect my family. You can protect your own family. And that's what a citizen's movement is all about. That's what we're doing here. We, the American citizens, are getting involved in politics. And we're going to find out if we do it correctly. Remember I said we don't do it because the people are assholes? And that's true. They're assholes. Who wants to hang around with assholes? And that's precisely why they are assholes, because they want those 200,000 seats to be empty. But when we go in, when I went in, and I realized I was in the ring, it's not the first time I've been in the ring. I mean, I spent 25 years in the ring, full time, full time. You know, I get a chance to develop my skill, my well-being, my oratory, my composition, my ability to communicate with you. I get a chance to do something that's selfless. I'm a public servant. It's good for my health. They set it up so it's bad for me. But their whole model is bad for me because it's the piracy and the drugs and the slavery model, the model of the British Empire. Of course, that's no fun. It's, it, it feels terrible. But when we come in, the American citizens, and bring in faith and family and a desire to spread well-being, oh, my gosh, this is a great opportunity to get healthy. And that's what I'm doing. I'm figuring out how to use politics so that I become a healthier person, a more organized person, a more accomplished person. Just for me. I'm not showing off for you. It's just for me. I know how I'm growing and how my health is changing because I'm living a life of service. I'm living a life of public service. I'm devoting myself to my country and my countrymen and to my God instead of staying at home and being completely self-interested. And when we make that transition from self-absorption, it's called narcissism. When we make that transition from narcissism to altruism. Oh, baby, that's when the well-being starts. That's when you, you got a health problem, you got a chronic condition. When you go out and start to give of yourself, wherever you're at, it doesn't matter where you're at. I meet with people here in Minnesota. I don't judge them. I'm not a judge. I'm here to form a community of people that care one for the other. And courage is contagious. Some of you know where that came from. It is contagious. And I'm here in Minnesota, and my courage, it's spreading out. Hey, the Three Stooges, they don't even know where this is coming from. It's coming from everywhere. We're inside their wire. Because we came in like dummies. We figured out that they were screwed, screwing us. And we said, hey, you know what? Up yours. We're not going to do it this way. And there's many, many, many of us that are leading the charge up the hill. It's fantastic. It's so good for my health and my self-image and how I feel about my life. It's just great. So I urge you to get in. And there's something else I want to talk about in the few minutes we have left together. Because remember I said truth media plus the patriot economy equals freedom and that the precinct strategy is the way to bring the truth media and the patriot economy to your neighbors you know, pre- precinct means neighborhood. That's all. It's a, it's a political term for your backyard. All we need to do is meet people in our backyard, and we don't need all of them. You don't have to knock on 2,000 doors. It would be nice if you did. That would be very impressive. And there are people that are doing that. But let's just say you had 20 neighbors that you talked to about, hey, There's a guy named Royce White. He's got a great podcast. It's called Please Call Me Crazy. You know, he used to play in the NBA. He's a really interesting dude. Would you check him out? 
give me your email address. I want to send you some, some, some shorts and clips from this guy. I think he's really interesting. And that's all we need to do. We need to take the content. This is how we do this at the precinct level. We need to take the content that you're seeing here and you need to spread it out amongst all the people that you know. You know, you got a brother, can't talk to him, super leftist. Send him the content. And you know why? I'm not a judge. I don't know when God is going to change someone's heart. Just send it out. Send out the content. Send it out. Encourage people to come together as a community. Learn how your party works. Learn how to get into the party. We're going to make that easy for you. We're going to make a big effort to support that in Minnesota. But at PrecinctStrategy.com, it's there. Dan will work with you. We're not kidding around about this. We're looking for 200,000 public servants. Okay, you're in your neighborhood, and you're spreading this political message. It's the truth. We're not making up lies. We're saying, I, I, you make I statements. I'm getting involved because I'm afraid these people are going to kill me. I'm getting involved because these people have got us $33 trillion in debt, and I don't want to be poor. They're making me poor. They're taking all my net worth away from me. They're taxing me with inflation. I want to talk. Can we talk about it? Do you have a job? Are you working? Do you know the value of your work is being diminished by inflation? Do you know our whole system is dependent on inflation? Because we live in a debt society. Here, dollar bill, right? Pull it out. I hope you have at least one. And you read. It's in a fine print. Let me see if I can read this. This note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. This note is legal tender for all debts, all debts, public and private. This is about debt, debt. And why do we know that? We're $33 trillion in debt. $33 trillion? Hey, Mr. Neighbor. They're going to take all my money away. Are you working, Mr. Neighbor? Mr. Neighbor, what do you think about this? Have you ever thought about it? Nah, I don't think about it. Really? You don't think? I know, you know, I like your kids. Hey, our kids play together. You know what? I'm worried about my kids. You got to talk to people. People are taking the blue pill. You and I are the red pill. We're the red pill. Now, you know, we're going to have some people that don't like us for being a red pill. Too bad. Too bad. Those people are going to kill me. And I know they're going to kill me because if you read what they write down, they're very honest about it. The United Nations has written down, we're vastly overpopulated. The world's population must be reduced. And you know how much they want to reduce it? You can go find this for yourself. 90%. What? Go find it for yourself. Don't believe me. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to go find it for yourself. And when you read that, you're going to go, whoa. You know what some of these people think? I want to be in the 10% that's left. And you know what? Screw you. That means 90% of the people have to die? Hey, nuclear war is really good for that, isn't it? That's why we're doing politics, because we got to wrest control of the steering wheel away from people who believe in eugenics. Look it up, eugenics. They believe in it. They're Nazis. No, are they walking around with swastikas on their arm? That's too passe. They're not letting us identify them so easily. But they're Nazis. Where did they get their ideology? Oh, I sent five of my kids to university. That's where they got it. Yes. Yes. We teach our children to be eugenicists. We teach them that there's a huge environmental crisis, that the world's going to burn up. There's going to be a tremendous environmental cataclysm. And my kids love the earth so much that they hate human beings. Anybody thought about that? They love the earth so much they hate humans. Come on. 
I mean, the whole point of the place is humans. Unless you're pro-salamander. You know, these people, I think some of them think salamanders are more important than human children. Is a salamander more important than my children? No, it's not. Do I want to kill salamanders? No, I don't. And if we pursue a culture that's dedicated to human well-being, these issues are solvable in ways we haven't even thought of yet. The people that are telling us how to think about this are really unopposed. Look at the two parties. It really doesn't matter who runs Democrat or Republican. It's the same. It's a little different, but it's the same. Nothing has changed my entire adult life. Since 1973, when Roe versus Wade got passed, which divided the people into two opposing camps, nothing has changed of substance, except we're much better at killing each other. That we're great at. That's getting better all the time. Thank you, science. Thank you, Columbia University. Thank you, researchers. Thank you for making us better at killing each other. So that other piece, when you're talking to your neighbors, truth media plus the patriot economy, what's that patriot economy? You know, you're in this movement. You have money, and you're spending it every day. Try to whatever extent you can to support the people and the businesses that are supporting this movement. Yes, it's easy to go to a big box store. Look what they're selling. Look what the big box stores are selling. First of all, they are giant distribution arms of foreign entities that are opposed to our country. Hey, that's what it is. Do you have to pay more to buy something made in the United States? Yes, you do. Is it worth it? Yes, it is. Do you have to pay more to pay something that's not made by an enemy? Find a country where something's imported, where the product is made by a friend and not an enemy, to take the time to figure that out? Uh, yeah, it's worth it because we're sending our money over to people that hate us. We're giving our money to American companies that are working to undermine our freedom. They're working to enslave us. Why just mindlessly give our money to these people? So you take the truth media plus the patriot economy, and then you operationalize these ideas through the precinct strategy, our political action plan to take these ideas of the truth and a political economy of the people who are telling the truth operationalized through the political strategy of the precincts, and guess what? One election cycle, we can turn this thing around. One. And why do I know that? Because it's already happening. These evil people, their constituency is fractured. Why? Because I'm here. Royce is here. Thousands of us are now podcasting. We're talking one to the other. This is like a conversation. We could be having this over a cup of coffee at my house. I would talk to you just this way. If you came to my house and we had a cup of coffee or a sparkling water and we sat and talked, this is what we'd be talking about. People get tired of mass, tired of me. We're on the verge of nuclear war. We're on the verge of financial collapse. We just had a bioweapon run across our country. My opinion, it's my opinion, and I'm entitled to my opinion, and I don't want to be suppressed because I have an opinion. Look at what they're doing to Bobby Kennedy. In the Democrat Party, his father was a martyr. The Kennedy name, two of them martyred. The son of one of the martyrs, Bobby Kennedy Jr., he's running for the nomination for the for the Democrat Party to be a presidential, you know, the presidential candidate. And they're turning him into a conspiracist, a conspiracy theorist. Oh, come on. He's just asking questions. You mean we've come to a point in America where we can't ask questions? No, we want to ask questions one to the other. So truth, truth media, a political economy of the businesses and people that are supporting the truth media, a political strategy that works out through our neighbors, talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, talk to your relatives, talk to your children. This lie, this judgment, don't talk about religion and politics, hey, that is exactly in there. That judgment is in there to be sure nothing changes. 
Remember Christ said, judge not lest you be judged? That judgment, don't talk about religion and politics. I release the judgment that says, I can't talk about religion and politics. I release that judgment, and I release the judgment that I'm only talking about religion and politics. I'm seeking balance with the people around me. And I want to express my political thoughts. I want to express them to you. I want to change my community. Now, I'll tell you how important this is. We're on the verge of a nuclear war. I played Senator Graham. He's telling you we're on the verge of a nuclear war. We're $33 trillion in debt. Our economy has already collapsed. We just don't know it. It has collapsed. People are going to start losing their jobs. There's no money. It's really horrifying. 85% of our fellow citizens are living paycheck to paycheck. If they lose their jobs, they don't have money to eat. 60% of our fellow citizens have chronic conditions that require ongoing medical treatment and medication, and they're sick. Their well-being is compromised. And so many of those diseases actually could be ameliorated if we had a different concept about well-being. Let us not think that these people that wear white coats have the answers. What they have is a business model, slavery, drugs, and piracy. And they are the purveyors of the judgments that keep that business model in place, and that's all they care about because they're on the payroll. They're just on the payroll. They're on the payroll. They're getting paid to sell you and me a BS story. There's so much more that we can do as American citizens. So much more we can do. And we're going to do it when we fill those 200,000 seats in the Republican Party and come together as a community. And let's do it today. Go to Precinct Strategy, precinctstrategy.com, Learn about how to get in the game of politics, and let's get out there and save this country for our families, for our children, and for our faith in God. And on that note, I want to thank you for letting me be your guest host. I love doing this with you. Look forward to seeing you soon again. Go to the Professor Penn Podcast. We'll get into all these issues kind of in a different way. And I want to go out. We've played this before, but I want to do it again because I'm just in the mood for it. Let's go out with the Star Spangled Banner. Tanner, can you cue that up? And thank you very much for joining. Be well.